interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Welcome to Africa Chess Update. Please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more chess videos. Welcome chess lovers once again to Africa Chess Update. The goal of this channel, or at least the idea behind it, is to, to profile the greatest African uh, chess players, you know, near home and abroad. And to also talk about upcoming players and cover African events. Uh, today I've got a special treat for you. Uh, and I'll be talking on, talking about none other, none other than uh, Amon Simtoe. Uh, from Zambia was the the first sub-Saharan Grandmaster, so that um, that is to say he was he was the first Grandmaster in in the Sadek region, Southern Africa. Okay, and here in this game, which was played at um, the U.S. Open, it was played at, at the U.S. Open in America in in two thousand and seven. He was actually three tournaments i think three tournaments away from achieving his final gm norm and he was playing none other than hikaru nakamura who was actually the united states champion at the time okay so without further ado um d4 f5 so it was a dutch oh at this point um maybe let me just give you five seconds if if you you know if you're enjoying the channel me please don't forget to to subscribe and click and you know leave a comment or share the video and let me just give you a few seconds to do that before i continue okay so f5 knight f3 knight f6 c4 d6 so a year before before this tournament Nakamura had won the had was already US champion. Simto had played Nakamura before in, in 2001 but I think Nakamura was much younger at the time. But by this time he was already a strong grandmaster. He was already rated at by, at the time this game was played he was rated 2647. Uh, Simto was rated 24 And but you know this game is so brilliant it's a, it's a, it's a fine example of, of attacking play. He actually Simto actually managed to wrap up this game in less than in less than thirty moves here. So after G three, G six, you've got uh, Fianchetto on both sides. And after knight C three, Nakamura played a curious move, knight knight C six. So this is a provocative move, you know. Because you know, looking at the position, you know, d5 looks it, it looks so inviting, it looks so natural, and which is what what uh, Simtoe played. And Simtoe at this at this at the, when this game was played, he was he was still an IM at the time. He was still an IM at the time. So there's a, there's a funny anecdote, like a, a story that um, the tournament before this one. He had gone to the. He was playing in the Ch Chicago Open, and uh, one grandmaster, um, Anatoly Lane, I think it was, actually refused to play him in the in the last round. He forfeited his game because he said he can't play. Uh, he can't play two grandmasters. Uh, he can't play two games with black in a row against grandmasters. And yet Simto was still I am at the time. So. I guess this Russian grandmaster had actually seen Simtoe playing and knew what he was capable of. It. That's why he was, he was afraid to play. Okay, so any five, and after takes, pawn takes, e4. Um, another interesting point I wanted to bring up here is that 
I think Simtoe and, and Nakamura actually have similar playing styles. You know, from from I think what I've I'm mean, from the games that I've seen Simtoe's games, he he likes you know really dynamic, fluid play. You know, with lots of mobility for his pieces, and he's not he's not overly concerned with you know with with structure. You know, so he's not really like a, a classical principal player. He's more he's more tactical, dynamic, and and that's pretty much you can say that pretty much you know. Um, goes for, for Nakamura as well. So here we had a clash of, uh, between two players with uh, very sharp styles and it produced, uh, I mean, I think one of the finest games that um, Africa has ever produced. I think it's important, especially for young players, to try and learn these, these games by heart because you can only become great by, you know, studying the great players that came before you. So here Nakamura went for... Uh, an interesting pawn sacrifice f4 and the the, the fight for the initiative began here and Nakam, um Simtoe actually accepted the sacrifice pawn takes pawn takes and bishop times f4 and then there was knight takes e4 so black can play this because the rook on i mean the bishop on f4 is under attack by the rook I'm pretty sure Simto had seen this and had planned this contingency, queen to c1, which supports the rook, the bishop on f4, and also supports the knight on c3. So thereby he's putting the question to the to the knight on e4. Now I should say here that if, if black plays say okay, knight takes c3 and pawn takes c3. This position, you know, in as much as where well, black is, is a pawn up, it's not so easy to play for him. Because if you look at it, um, white's pieces are, are, are more active. Uh, I mean, are definitely more active. He's got a backward pawn on, on e7 there. You know, so let's say he plays, for instance, for instance, um, e5. Okay. Let's say he tries e5 after bishop g5 and maybe queen e8 and queen e3. You find that, you know, his pieces are not so great here. I mean, the position is still equal. You know, black can play like uh, bishop, bishop f5, I think, in this position, just to prevent rook b1. Otherwise, you won't get a chance to play it. You know, h6... H6 probably is not so great because you're just weakening the king, so I don't achieve anything. Oh, actually, it's a blunder. You can't even play that. <laughs> okay. So Nakamura instead decided to to keep the pieces on the board here. Yeah? He didn't take on C3. He played E5 immediately. Okay, so we have nine times E4. Queen c1. He played e5 Im immediately here. Yeah? And Simtoe played bishop to e3. And after nd6, bishop g5. Okay, so white, uh, uh, black played queen e8 here. Yeah? So black's going to attack on the, on the c4 pawn, but I think if you pay attention to this bishop here on g5, I mean, he played a very, a very, you know, decisive role in the game because it actually cut, cut off, you know, black's pieces from communicating with each other. From the moment it went there, it actually, it never moved for the rest of the game from that square. Black's biggest challenge here is that, you know, his, his pieces, they, they actually, they never managed to, to work well together here. And Simtoe managed to, you know, uh, conjure up an attack that decided the game. So after queen e8, we had knight b5. This move, this move intends to, to fight for the initiative, you see. If you're down in, if you're down on material, then it, 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 it doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense to play, you know, like conservatively, you know, you really have to to try and open up lines as much as possible, you really need to fight for the initiative. As long as your pieces are active, you have chances, you know. But as soon as the, the game starts to, the play starts to dry up, then that, that material difference 
begins to tell. Like for instance, in this position, if if knight times knight times b5, pawn times b5, queen times b5, and queen takes c7. In as much as um, black is pawn up here, you know this position is you know it's far from easy to evaluate. There's a passed pawn on on d5, and and both of white's bishops are excellent here, and his rooks easily come to the center. You know, so that material difference it doesn't really count at this point. It might play a role later on in the ending, you know, but it, it's not important now. So that goes to show that, you know, in such positions, it's always important to play as actively as possible, especially when you sacrifice material for the initiative. Um, Nakamura here played rook to f7, uh, defending the c7 pawn. He didn't want to exchange and open up the c file. And possibly, you know, um, let white create a, a passed pawn on the d file by playing queen takes b5, queen takes c7. And then after knight takes d6, c times d6 and c5, you know, white breaks the position open. I mean, especially for, for, for his bishops, you know. Uh, black here could try... Okay, I just want to look at one move instead of the move he played. Because he played, he played um, c takes, c, uh, d takes c5. So let's say he tried to say, for instance, um, I don't know, queen to maybe queen d7. Maybe queen d7 here. Yeah? Just uh, trying to, trying to support his pawn. Um, black can tr uh, white now, white now could probably just play c times c times d6. And after queen takes d6, we just have that position when he's got way as two strong bishops and a passed pawn, and then a passed uh, a passed pawn on 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 d5. You know, he's probably going his next move is probably going to be a queen move. I think if I was playing this position, I'd probably play queen e3 here. I think yeah, probably queen e3. To try and centralize my, to try and, or queen d2 maybe, yeah, maybe queen d2. Just to try and centralize my pieces and get my major pieces into the game, you know. So, Nakamura actually played, preferred to play more actively with pawn takes, if I queen takes, and b6. Because probably he felt like he wanted to, to develop as quickly as possible, get his light squared bishop out. But after queen to c4 and bishop to b3, uh, here, here Simtura played what I think is the star move of the of the game, bishop to to h3. And I like this move so much because I mean it, it it it's 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 counterintuitive, you know. The the dark squared bishop is now on the on the long diagonal, which looks really dangerous, you know. Most players you feel you know, you, we don't feel safe, you know, to moving our light squared bishop away from g2 like that. But here it's actually an excellent move because one, it prevents the rook from coming to, it prevents the rook from coming to c8. It threatens uh, bishop to e6, you know. And if you look at it, I mean, black's pretty tight up here. It's hard for him to find, you know, good squares for his pieces. So he played king h8 here. Just try to avoid trying to avoid um bishop to e6 the pin on the on the rook. And after bishop e6, he tried to offer up his rook, you know, through f5. Because I think he was aiming to get this kind of a position where even though he's even though he's exchanged down, he took a pawn for the exchange and he's got two strong bishops. Uh, as you can see, he's no longer under attack here. You know the the initiative probably is passed will pass on to to black now because he can try some things. He can try you know queen g6. He can try rook c8. You know he can activate his pieces. I mean it's still I think it's far from it's far from from clear here what's really going on. But but I think black will be in less trouble than he was than he got into in the, in the game. So. 
So Sumchoe being the player that he is who likes initiative didn't take the rook and actually played queen to h4. Nakamura played queen b5 here. Yeah? Trying to... I don't know whether he was going pawn hunting or he wanted to play rook on a to f8 maybe to bring his other rook to the king side. But after this brilliant move as well, a4 and queen takes uh, queen takes b2. And I mean, this game for me is quite, I mean, it's quite a brilliant game. I mean, it's such a brilliant game. It's, it's quite startling because, you know, some tourist moves, you know, at first when you look at them, they like, they don't make, you know, it's hard for you to make sense of them. Like you're kind of like, oh, what's he, what's he trying to do, you know? But only after after a while, that's when you know the, the genius of his plan comes in or becomes apparent. After rook to c1, you notice that um, you notice that white has got uh, four pieces. He's got four pieces here, attacking the the black king. You know, and black's only got his dark squared bishop. You know, which is actually doing anything useful in terms of helping the king. You know. Um, Black here played the uh, queen to b3. I think he's trying to he's trying to get his pieces back into trying to get his queen back maybe into the game. I don't know maybe he was, he's also threatening bishop times d5 maybe to exchange, but it was too little too late already because the rook um, is already invading the seventh rank here. So, like I was saying, if you notice, White has one, two, three four pieces that are attacking the black king and the black king only has one 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 guard i think that's working well for him the bishop on g7 and the rest of his pieces when they came into the game it was already too late so now after in this position after queen to b3 simtoe didn't bother defending the the pawn on d5 and actually played a brilliant move Rook to c7 here, attacking the light squared bishop. So now we have a forcing sequence of moves, and at this point, um, Nakamura was already losing. So, I mean, it's quite amazing. I mean, if you can think of it, like, if you can imagine, uh, he's an international master and he's, and he's defeating the the US champion and, and, I mean, a grandmaster of rated 2647, and he hasn't even got his title yet. After this tournament, he went to a tournament in, uh, I think, the Trinidad and Tobago. And then after that, he went to, I think he went to the Netherlands, which is where he got his final norm. There in the Netherlands, he started off with, with I think he won his first four games. He won his first four games. And then after some draws, I think a bit later on, that's when he, that's when he got his GM norm. Um, I don't know uh, why he's... He, he doesn't play anymore, or I think he's, he's not active anymore. It's been a long time, I think, since um, Grandmaster Amon Torres has played a tournament. He, he lives in America. He lives in America now. But this game is just, I mean, it's, it's, it's a clear example of the, the, I mean, the level of talent he has. And it's also, it's quite inspirational for us to know that if, if, if he can do something like this, then a, a lot of, a lot of you upcoming younger players can can do it as well, and you need to take notes from these from these masters. Okay, so after rook c seven, uh, black played bishop takes d five, and I think I'm just going to pause here for for maybe ten seconds or so, try and um, to give you time to try and guess what white's next move was. Okay, so here, white unleashed the brilliant rook times g7. Wow. Wow. Okay, so this move is just, I mean, it's, it's mind-blowing. Uh, visually, it's stunning. It's already, um, rook times g7 is threatening checkmate already on, on h7. And black has a, a, a number of uh, options here, but no, none of them really work. 
Um, let's start with say um, king. Let's start with maybe king takes. Um, if the king takes the rook, okay. If king takes rook, um, white would win here by playing. King takes g7 here. Um, white simply wins by playing bishop to h6 check and after king to h8 i think is the only move then maybe bishop times a5 i mean it's threatening queen queen f6 check after pawn takes f5 and queen f6 check and king g7 queen g7 is checkmate also another move which probably wouldn't work here is um rook times g5 if rook times g5 would check then it's queen times g5 okay and if king times g7 if king times g7 then we would have queen takes e5 with a check followed by bishop times uh, okay let's say king to i don't know maybe h6 then just bishop times g5 is just is just simply is just simply winning here yeah. um the the game actually continued after rook times g7 the game actually continued oh he actually played rook times g5 then after queen times g5 after queen times g5 okay it seems like my engines on autopilot here after queen times after queen times uh, g5 he played bishop times h6 then queen f6 you know and it doesn't matter what black plays next year it's just going to be mated in two moves i think so okay that was the game i mean 29 moves a brilliant victory against the u.s champion i'm sure this put him in you know in, i mean this probably just boosted his confidence and uh two tournaments after this he just went on and got his third gnome and he became the first gm in southern africa okay so thank you for watching and if you enjoy the game please uh take a moment to click a like and to subscribe to the channel and see you um, i mean at the next video